Good morning. Welcome to our service here at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Mankato. And whether you're with us here in person or visiting us online, uh, we thank you for joining us this day and pray God's blessings on our worship. May they be pleasing to him. And once again, we're going to do things just a little bit differently and, and see if you can do two weeks in a row of handling, doing all manner of things during the offering again today. And we're going to put the greeting, the welcoming of, of those who are sitting near to you uh, once again uh, during the offering and then also signing the guest book uh, register as well. So we'll begin today, as you can see, with an opening prayer, which I will read for us. And we will be using this on our non-communion Sundays uh, here in January and also in February during the Epiphany season. O Lord, our God, how blessed are we. Not only have you given us your word, which offers and imparts to us all the fruits of the redemption of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, but you have also opened our eyes so that we may know your grace and in firm confidence receive it. Though the world the law, our hearts, and our consciences condemn us, what do we care? Your word declares us free of all guilt. We pray keep us in such faith until our end. Grant that all of us here today may stand in awe of the great treasure which we possess purely by your grace. And that more and more would come to know and trust in this treasure as well. Help us to triumph over all attacks of the devil, the world, and our flesh. And finally, to depart this life in peace. And to be received into your eternal kingdom. Hear us for the sake of our risen and victorious champion, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll continue with our opening hymn. Thank you. We've come together to worship the Lord our God. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to his name, to proclaim his love in the morning and his faithfulness at night. 
One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Lift up your hearts to the God of our salvation. We raise our voices in praise to him. And we'll sing the responsive song. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of the world, we confess that we have sinned against your divine majesty by thought, word, and deed, provoking your wrath against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for our sins. We grieve to think of them. Their burden is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, gracious Father. Forgive us our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear ones, lift up your hearts. The Lord God, according to his promise, is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. By the command of Christ and the authority of my holy office, I forgive your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you in Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your one and only Son to be the light of the world. Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and believed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Then you may be seated. Our scripture readings for today uh, once again come from the Epiphany season, which just fits in uh, very nicely with our study of our mission statement and core values and our vision statement, which we'll be looking at today. Our first reading for today comes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. In the opening verses of chapter 62, he talks about new names that will be given to the people of Zion 
which includes, by God's grace, dear ones, you and me. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah, which means my delight is in her, and your land Beulah, which means married. For the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married. As a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. This is the word of our Lord. We'll continue with the singing of Psalms 133 and 34. Uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. <laughs> distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, 
to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. This is part of the words of the inspired Apostle Paul. Would you please stand for the reading of the Gospel? Our Holy Gospel for today, a very familiar story from the Gospel of John. It is Jesus' first miracle, the changing of water into wine. Chapter 2, and we begin at the first verse. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you would please now join with me, we'll use as a confession of our Christian faith this day the words of Martin Luther's explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. And you may be seated.
Please bow your heads with me in prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Heavenly Father, sanctify us in thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text for today, as well as our vision statement printed for you on page 8 of your bulletin, if you did happen to pick one up, I invite you to turn to that. We'll be making use of uh, that vision statement at the bottom of page 8 in just a minute. I invite you to follow along now as I read for you our sermon text for today, which is a beautiful prayer that Paul included in his letter to the congregation, his friends at Philippi, in chapter 1. There Paul writes, and this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is God's Word. Dear friends in Christ, like I've said already a couple of times in the service this morning, uh, we've been... Uh, we're taking the uh, Sundays here in the Epiphany season uh, to take a look at the mission statement, the vision statement, and the five core values which we as a congregation approved um, sometime before Christmas last year, just a month or so ago. Um, we looked last Sunday at the mission statement, which is just kind of a general thing. It's a, kind of a generic thing. We see mission statements uh, pretty regularly in congregations. A vision statement is something different, folks. This is, this is stating where we as a congregation, by God's grace and in His strength, hope to go the direction that we want to go moving forward from here. Uh, on the bottom of page 8, you'll find the vision statement, and I'd like us to read it together because it's kind of an interesting statement. So if you do have a copy of the bulletin, the bottom of page 8, Please join me. We have it here on the screen. Even better. Please join me. We'll read it together. St. Mark is a growing community of believers who are active in their faith and personally committed to our ministry. We enthusiastically create and participate in outreach opportunities and spiritual development for youth and adults. Our worship together reflects the joy and awe of what our God has done for us. So, can you sense there's a little bit of a difference here in this statement from the one that we looked at last Sunday? There's a lot of action. A lot of action in, in this. Just look at the adjectives that we use. The growing community. They're active in their faith personally committed to our ministry, enthusiastically create and participate in outreach opportunities and spiritual development. Our worship together reflects the joy and the awe of what our God has done for us. If you know anything about English, you know that the action words are typically not the adjectives, right? They're the verbs. Those are the ones that have the motion in them. And of course, the verbs have motion in Him too, but already in the adjectives, you see that there's a, there's a difference about this mission, this statement. Got to tell you that as I look at this mission statement, there's a part of me, it's that old rascal that's called my sinful flesh, which is the consummate couch potato when it comes to anything spiritual. Looks at that statement and, no, well, it doesn't actually... You know, violate my body by making me throw up, but it would like to. Doesn't want anything to do with that. It would so much rather that I just kind of chill. Oh, that's great for somebody else, you see. But Tom, you just chill. Take it easy doesn't have to be you. You're kind of old anyhow. You know? Leave it for the young guys, right? But there's a part of you and me, dear ones. 
It's that gift that God gave to you and me in our baptisms. It's called, the Bible calls it by different names. Let's call it our new man or our new self. It's the creation. It's God's gift to you and me in the day of our baptism. And it's been the Holy Spirit's job to feed that new man right up through our baptisms right to today. And that new man looks at this vision statement rolls up his sleeves and says, just point me. Just point me in the right direction. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to do to show my thanks for what God has done for me in Jesus. I can't believe. I woke up this morning. This is my new man, you see. I woke up this morning standing in awe that God's promise through Jeremiah is still true for me today. His mercies are new every morning. Man, how can I thank you, Lord? And St. Mark's vision statement says, this is how you can thank Him. This is what you can do. St. Paul's prayer gives us a wonderful opportunity, dear ones, to, as we look at this prayer today, it's a wonderful encouragement to take this thing off of the page and into the shoe leather of your life and mine. To turn this from theory to reality. And it all has to do with love abounding. This prayer from the Apostle Paul, folks, i got to tell you, is just so loaded with good stuff. We could take a sermon on every phrase in this prayer. So let's kind of focus for today on that first part of the prayer. We'll just maybe stay mostly with that. Because everything else that Paul writes flows from our understanding of that first phrase. So Paul says there, this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Let's just stop there for right now. We'll see if we have any more time. Thank you very much on the screen. That's it. Um, We'll see if we have time for, to look at, at anything more than this, really, for today. So, I don't know about you, but when I look at that, and I think my love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, I don't know. It sounds kind of stoic to me. Something that a good German would write. You know? Isn't love supposed to be, I don't know, kind of a feely kind of thing? I, I think if you would put that in front of, uh, if, if you would say, so, you know, you, you're, at a, you're at a wedding reception, okay, and you go up to the bride and groom, and, and you would say, so would this characterize how you feel about one another right now, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight? I'm thinking that the folks would look at you like you're a little off plum, you know what I'm saying? I don't think they would be thinking that way. They might say something like, well, you know, in terms of knowledge and depth of insight, I could know the other person better than I do. But I bet they'd say this, but I couldn't love them more than I do right now. And then if you had the privilege 40 or 50 years later to ask that same couple, they would say invariably, because you've heard it from folks who've been married that long, I've grown to love my spouse in ways I couldn't even begin to imagine. 40 or 50 years ago, on our wedding day. This is, folks, what Paul is getting at in this text. And it's important for you to understand something. 
The old King James, when it came out with its translation, included a word that Paul included in these words here. When the NIV came out with its translation, it left off the words. Maybe thought it was redundant. Don't know. So the little word fits in between a bound and more. And it's the little word, yet. Yet. So the way that Paul wrote it would be, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. It's kind of an important word, folks, for this reason. In the first verses of the letter, the apostle makes it very clear that these friends of his in Philippi have come to know the Lord Jesus. They've come to love him and to understand his love for them. They have encouraged one another. They have been a beacon in that area in Macedonia. This is just east of Philippi. Uh, Just east of Thessalonica, I mean. And we looked at Thessalonians last summer in our studies. All of this had been happening in them, and Paul isn't denying it. He isn't saying it's time for you folks to turn around and get going. He's saying they already are going, but his prayer is that they would abound yet more and more. Do you get the force of what Paul is saying there, folks? He's not saying to you and me, we haven't been loving our God. He's saying by God's sheer grace and mercy, you have been loving your Lord. You've shown it in all kinds of ways. My prayer for you, Paul is saying, whether it's in Philippi, Thessalonica, or St. Mark's in Mankato, is that your love for your God would abound yet more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Well, I only know of one way for our love to grow more in in knowledge and depth of insight. And that's if we are staying in God's Word, right? Only way we're going to grow is if we meet with God in the pages of Scripture, and He gives you and me the chance to see His love displayed in the lives of all manner of people, from royalty to slave, and everywhere in between. And to read those stories of those people and to see again and again how God in His grace and mercy supplied all of their needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And as you and I read these things, we say, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And the mercy and grace He displayed to these people And the pages of Scripture is the same grace He will show to me. The Apostle Paul, uh, actually, this is one of his prison epistles, uh, Philippians. Another one is Ephesians, and Colossians is a third one. And you can see some similarities in all three of these letters. Paul has a prayer in Ephesians chapter 3, and you might not only see some similarities, but you might actually see what Paul is getting at here. He puts it kind of succinctly here in his prayer to the Philippians. This is what he said in Ephesians chapter 3. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long 
and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? It does kind of explain, doesn't it, a little bit, this portion particularly of Paul's prayer here to the congregation in Philippi. The Lord Jesus, um, when He was um, teaching His disciples uh, the, the incidents recorded in John chapter 6, some wonderful things happened in the early part of the chapter, feeding the 5,000, walked on the water. Uh, there's also what's called the bread of life discourse in John chapter 6. This is where Jesus describes Himself as the bread of life. Whoever comes to Me, Jesus says, will never go hungry. He who believes in Me will never be thirsty. But the people who had followed Him who had been fed the day before on the hillside on the Sea of Galilee, wanted more food for the body. And Jesus says, this is what you're looking for. Not the food that I want to give you, which is my body, spiritually, to give to you, like through the bread and the wine and Holy Communion, but not limited to that for the strengthening of your faith in me as your Savior. And the folks didn't want to hear that. And John, by the end of the chapter, says that a lot of people left Jesus at that time. Before they left, though, Jesus said this. He said, The Spirit is life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. This prayer for love abounding, dear ones, yet more and more, to grow in this grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It happens, dear ones, when you and I meet with our Savior in His Word, and you might recall that part of this vision statement is to take a deep breath. We enthusiastically create and participate in outreach opportunities and spiritual development for youth and adults. And our sinful flesh says, hands off on that. And our new man says, let's get going. And let's get growing. With love, Abounding yet more and more for my Savior and all that He has done for me. Dear ones, this vision statement is meant to be challenging. This vision statement, did I say mission? This vision statement is meant to be challenging. It isn't meant for us to just sit by and kind of go with the flow. Yep, we're out in the middle of the stream now. We can just let the current take us along. Uh-uh, folks. The world in which you live is a very strong current. And it wants to sweep you and me away from God. One of us on one little oar may end up just spinning our canoe in circles. Two of us on two oars. And we can keep the canoe straight. Four of us on oars. Eight of us on oars. How about 50 of us? How about 100 of us on those oars? All moving together at the call, at the voice of our Savior. Rowing together in the strength that His Word gives us and in the love that is welling up inside of us in thanksgiving for all that He has done for us in Jesus. This is that vision statement, dear ones. God bless us and help us to put our oars in the water together. And together, in the blessing of the Holy Spirit, each of us doing our part 
to make this congregation of St. Mark's alive and thrive, and all to the glory of our great God and Savior. Amen. Would you please stand? May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you may be seated for the offering. During the offering, if you would, please uh, also fill out the friendship pad. Once you get those things done, please greet those folks who are seated by you. Thank you. I ask you now, folks, if you would please stand and we'll sing the offering prayer today together. pray the responsive prayer of the church. O Lord our God, your Holy Spirit has led us to choose this as our vision statement. St. Mark is a growing community of believers who are active in their faith and personally committed to our ministry. We enthusiastically create and participate in outreach opportunities and spiritual development for youth and adults. Our worship reflects the joy and awe of what our God has done for us. Eternal God and Father, we thank you for the many blessings we enjoy as members of St. Mark, your gracious word and sacraments, opportunities to worship together and to grow in faith and knowledge, for occasions to serve and to be served, and for fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ here and in our synod. Receive our praise and thanks for all of your gracious blessings to us through Jesus Christ our Savior, and help us by your Spirit to use all of your blessings faithfully. Jesus Christ, Lord of the Church, you graciously called us, your people, to be your witnesses in the world around us. Open our eyes to see the great and noble work that lies before each of us. Help us to see you, even in the least of these brothers and sisters of yours, and serve them to the best of our abilities as we would serve you. Awaken us to the opportunities you give us to proclaim your message of love and truth to those around us. Holy Spirit, giver of life, 
Through your word and sacraments, bestow on us the wisdom and courage we need to speak your truth in love, to clearly give the reason for the hope we have in Jesus, and to conduct ourselves always with gentleness and respect. Give to us the zeal of the early Christians who lived for him who loved them and gave himself for them, so that in all we do, the people we live with, work with, learn with, and play with will know we are Christians by our love. Heavenly Father, we have several special intercessions we would love to lift up to you at this time. We thank and praise you that you've watched over our sister Rosie Tischer during her recent fall. We thank you that you brought her through this fall and we pray and trust that you will grant healing to her body in these days ahead. Above all, O oh Lord, we pray that you'd grant strength to her soul and to the soul of Irv and to all who love Rosie. That they might know that in all of the changing scenes of life you remain the same. Your love for Rosie and for them all will never fail. And that finally, O oh Lord, we pray that you would bring Rosie and, and her loved ones and all of us into your eternal mansions in heaven. Our risen Savior Lutheran School has extended calls to Mr. Wolt to be our principal and Mr. Biedenbender to be our third and fourth grade teacher and band director. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would watch over these men in this time, that you would grant them the blessing of your Holy Spirit as they deliberate on the calls that they hold and the ones that they have received from us. We pray, O oh Lord, and trust that you will guide them to a decision that is in keeping with your perfect will and is absolutely and positively for the best for all of us. We also pray your blessing, O oh Lord, on St. Mark's call meeting tomorrow night and our voters meeting, that you grant us harmony, O oh Lord, as we strive to work together to so that your congregation might be a blessing here in West Mankato and beyond. And, O oh Lord, that in your grace and mercy you would grant to us the blessing of calling the, the person, the person exactly whom you want us to call, and that you would then guide that person to uh, a decision that is in keeping with your holy will. O oh Lord our God, let your kingdom come to us and many others according to your will, so that we and many more may join the assembly of saints and angels forever singing your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Amen. Thanks be to God. And we continue with our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And you may be seated for our next hymn.
Please arise. We'll join together in the commitment of service, beginning with the response from the congregation. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. How will you repay the Lord for all his goodness to you? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will sacrifice a thank offering to him and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Praise the Lord. May the Father in heaven strengthen you with power through his spirit so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. To him be glory in the church through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for a closing hymn. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, Thank you.
extend a sincere welcome to all of you. Thanks for joining us here on this Lord's Day. Let's see if I can get the microphone right. There we go. And just a couple of things real quickly. First of all, that call uh, meeting and voters meeting will take place tomorrow, tomorrow night here at church, uh, beginning at 6.30. I invite everybody, if you can please, to uh, take the time and come. I think that it sounds like we're going to begin with a call meeting. Uh, the district president, uh, Pastor Klatt, will be here with us. I want to get uh, his end of the, of the thing taken care of so that he can return, uh, get on his way back home. And then we'll continue after he leaves with the uh, voters meeting for uh, this winter quarter. Tomorrow night, 6.30. Uh, before you leave today, uh, we mentioned in the uh, response of prayer of the church, our brothers and sisters not only here at St. Mark, but across the Synod. And we'd like to close today with uh, this month's Wells Connection. can be taught. No, he can't. Hello, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. If 2020 was a year of isolation, then 2021 was a wonderful reminder of the importance of gathering in community, in person, to worship God and to serve others. That's the reason local congregations exist, and our synod exists to support our congregations. Here's a brief look at the year just passed. Delegates to the synod convention passed a resolution to start 100 new home missions in 10 years, beginning in July, 2023. It's an ambitious goal, reflecting confidence in our savior and the gifts he's given us to spread his word. It just makes me appreciate how ready, how willing Synod is to um, carry out this work. You know, that we're not just looking to sustain, we're not just looking to um, kind of plateau or stay where we are, but we understand that this, this gospel message is so important. While the pandemic opened new opportunities for online ministries overseas, 2021 saw a renewed blossoming of in-person mission work as we restarted the construction process for our training center in Vietnam and developed plans to send new missionaries to South America, Africa, even the United Kingdom. I've been praying for it very earnestly and I can't tell you how rejoiced I am, I just can't. Come it's just wonderful, yeah. The construction of a new field house at Martin Luther College was just one visible example of how God blessed our ministerial education system in 2021. We still face a shortage of pastors and teachers, which is why there is a renewed emphasis on recruiting future students and reducing or eliminating the student loan debt of our new graduates. We are going to be the future uh, pastors and teachers and called workers uh, in the Wells Synod, and it's just very encouraging to know that there's so many um, congregations and other people in schools that are supporting us like they are. In 2021, Congregational Services released a suite of new resources to help congregations seize opportunities for gospel outreach and spiritual growth. A key theme is helping lay people realize their role as the frontline workers in Christ's kingdom. And the Holy Spirit can work very strongly through those those one-on-one -on -one relationships with people we know, with family and friends and acquaintances and sometimes strangers too. Christian Aid and Relief had a busy year in 2021 as the pandemic continued to cause illness, upset supply chains, and destabilize employment. Where there was need, Christian Aid and Relief provided help on behalf of all of us. The pastor gave me the truth, trust me, uh, do you need help? Uh, I never before <laughs> uh, say something to somebody else where I, I need the support, no? One of the more visible Wells events of 2021 was the release of the new hymnal, Tens of thousands of copies were shipped to congregations this past fall, and new shipments are arriving daily. Much more than just a collection of hymns, the new hymnal is part of a package of resources, both print and digital, that will serve congregations as we worship our Savior for decades to come. The way that music uh, connects text to the head and to the heart in such a special, memorable way is invaluable. There's nothing like it. 
The future leaders of our church are our children and young adults. And one major way our synod serves them is through the Wells International Youth Rally. After a lot of planning in 2021, the rally is set for this summer in Tennessee, with 2,500 young people expected. We don't yet know all the challenges or opportunities 2022 will bring, but we do know that our heavenly future is secure in Christ, regardless of earthly events. While we're here, God has given us work to do in our families, in our churches, and the world, and he will bless us. Thank you.